Hey guys, uh, in this video I'm going to try to clear up some confusion that can arise when you have momentum conservation, vectors, and negative signs. So where the negative signs come from can be a little bit confusing and every person might have their own sort of interpretation of where they come from. So I thought I would show you um, a simple problem where my negative signs come from and then maybe it will help you keep track of your own. So this is the problem I want to do. I have two masses. I've just made them equal for simplicity. Uh, moving at two velocities towards each other, they're going to collide, they're going to interact somehow. I'm not specifying how they're interacting, but they're interacting some way, and they're going to bounce off of each other. And I also want to make sure that V2 is greater than V1, meaning that the mass on the right is moving faster. In fact, why don't I just give some actual numbers for these things so we have like a concrete idea. And also let's say that I measure the velocity of the mass on the right afterwards, and it's one meter a second. So I like to be very clear about what directions these things are going on, so I'm going to just write that out in words. Uh, V1 is going right, V2 is going left, and the final V2 I want to be right, and I specified my coordinate system like this. Um, so as vectors, the momentum of V1 is going to be positive, the momentum of V2 afterwards is going to be positive, but the momentum of V2 at the beginning is negative. So I want to use conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum splits into two components, the initial and final in the x and y direction. Now I have zero initial y momentum. That's because these velocity vectors are all in the x direction. So I can state immediately that the initial is zero, the final is zero in the y direction. So in the y direction, I'm going to have a zero momentum at the beginning and at the end. Okay, so let's write out the uh, initial in the x direction. So the initial momentum in the x direction is the sum of p1 in the x direction and p2 in the x direction. I can rewrite that as mv1 minus mv2. Now, the negative sign here is an acknowledgement that v2 is going in the um, negative x direction. Now v2 itself is positive, so I had to put this negative sign in there to make sure that the component in the x direction is correct. This negative sign comes from the direction of the entire momentum. v2, that's not the component of the velocity in the negative direction. Actually, the component of the velocity in the negative direction is negative v2. Uh, what I mean is that the initial momentum of the second particle is negative mv2 i hat. That negative sign is telling me that it's in the negative i hat direction. Okay, so we want to use momentum conservation, so let's write down the momentum, the final momentum in the x direction. And see, what I've done here is I've not included any negative signs. So of course we know that the v2 prime, that's this guy, is going to be positive, so that's that positive sign but I could add a negative sign here if I believe that V1 is going to be in the negative direction. But I have no idea what it's going to be. I haven't done the problem yet. So I'm going to leave this as a positive and see what V1 actually comes out to be. So now I'm going to set the uh, final momentum equal to the initial momentum in the x direction. And now I'm going to, uh, first of all, I'm going to cancel all the m. So you see that each term has an m on it. So I can divide the entire thing by m which gives me that, and then I can solve for my v1 prime, which is the unknown, here, and that is my final answer. So now let's plug in the actual values I have, and you can see that you'll get the answer of negative 5 meters a second. So this negative sign says that v1 afterwards is moving in the negative direction. Uh, you probably could have guessed this because uh, most of the momentum is coming from V2, which is in the negative direction. So the beginning has a momentum which is in the negative direction, so the end should also have a momentum in the negative direction. But V2 is moving to the right, so we need something in the negative direction to make up all the rest of that momentum in the negative direction. And that's what you get. V1 equals negative 5 meters a second. But the point is, I didn't have to think about the direction of this thing. That negative sign came because I was consistent when I kept all my negative signs. So I said all these guys were positive, and I put in the, the directions by hand. So I put this guy in by hand, and I put this guy in by hand because he was positive. I did not put in V1 by hand, but I got out a negative sign anyway. So this is an example where, because I was consistent with my negative signs, I got the sign in the end correct. You might do something a little bit different. Maybe you'll say that 
this thing is moving to the left, so the negative sign should be in front of this 5, and then this would be a positive sign because the negative sign is in V2, and then you would get a, po a different sign down here, but then you would get the exact same answer. You get negative 5 meters a second. So in this case, it doesn't matter what you do as long as you're consistent. And of course, this is the common theme in this class, is that consistency is the most important thing within a problem. You'll always get it right as long as you keep things consistent. Okay, so I hope that's cleared up a little bit about where these negative signs come from. But of course, we're going to be dealing with this over the next few class days. So I hope we'll get lots of chances to sort of see some of the more complicated details and work them out. Okay, thanks guys.